Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your hedge protection safety. Thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing in and through our lives. Thank you, Father, for your word. We glorify and magnify it in and through. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. We're going to get started. Uh, last week, we was talking about don't play it safe and um, being reserved towards God, being reserved against the things of God or being reserved for the things of God, like whichever way you want to go. Um, and we're just going to continue along that same line of uh, not playing it safe. So uh, uh, turn to Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. You know, because we are, I heard this uh, statement Saturday um, at one of them, at a man's fellowship. And it was, uh, the statement was, we are one left turn from not making the right decision. And they really just resonated with me. I was like, man, we just, as long as we're playing the safe, we want to move. Like, we won't even endeavor to make any turns. I understood what the, what the gentleman was saying because we were talking about one particular thing. And when he made that statement, that's what came to me was, you know, after he made the statement, we are one left turn from making the right decisions. And I just was like, wow, but if you plan to say, you ain't even gonna move, you ain't even gonna make a turn. So that's what was triggered when he said that, right? So Proverbs 26, um, playing it safe. When you play it safe, when you play it safe, when you play it safe, don't play it safe. Proverbs 26, you can start at verse 10. It says, <clears throat> excuse me, well, I'll give me one second. All right, hit <clears throat> a clear one. Ooh. The great God, Proverbs 6, verse 10, the great God that formed all things both rewarded the fool and rewarded transgressors. As a dog returned to his vomit, so a fool returned to his folly. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit, there is more hope of a fool than him. I want to read that in the uh, message version. I didn't get to copy and paste it to my notes, so I have to bring my hard, hard copy. But he said, uh, hire, a, hire a fool or a drunk, and you shoot yourself in the foot. As the dog eat its own vomit, so fools recycle silliness. See the man who thinks he's so smart. You can expect far more from a fool than from him. So it, 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 it would seem reasonable in some people's eyes. It would seem reasonable, you know, to, to some people when he, when he says here, as a dog returned to his vomit, so the fool returned to his folly. It would seem reasonable in the face of conflict, right? That, that people tend to gravitate backwards. Dog returning to his vomit. It seems reasonable in the face of conflict, people tend to gravitate backward towards something familiar and predictable. They go back to my safe haven. Got to get back where I feel comfortable, where I feel uh, complacent, but not really recognizing that it's being complacent, right? But going back to that place can actually complicate the, the healing process and they're going forward. For instance, if a person has been uh, mistreated by somebody in their, in their safe haven, will go back to, and retreat to, well, I'm going to just 
guard myself and stay away from people. Well, you're not processing and going through the healing process properly because you still don't have to encounter people. You know, but some people want to retreat and rather be to themselves. But if you too, if you were being to yourself, then you're all by yourself and you ain't gonna be able to teach yourself. A lot of people tend to think that way, right? So in order for us not to really play it safe, we gotta have a, a God kind of courage, you know, the God kind of courage, right? With, with the Lord as our shield, the trust and defender. Well, what if the Lord is like that? What are we afraid of? Turn to Psalm 91. So we got a dog, a fool a dog returning to a father, and a fool returning to his father, they're not properly going through the healing process. But then they trust, they say they trust and believe God and God. So you gotta have some courage, some God type of courage. If you really say that you trust and believe in, we'll quote this scripture. You know, a lot of people probably can just read it without putting their eyes on it or try to quote it without putting their eyes on it. But in Psalm 91, he said, he that, starting in verse one, he said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. But if we plan to say how these things want to be, it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place with the most high. Meaning the Lord is down on the inside. That's the secret place. Jesus, a lot of times, if you look at it, Jesus went on by himself, but that was just so he could communally get with the Father to get what the Father had so he can go back and distribute it. So if we trying to be to ourselves and plan to say, then we ain't really going to be distributors. We're going to be consumers, not distributors. Consumers and not distributors. Right? And if you're going to have, we got to have the God type of courage. That's the ability and the strength to make a decision or a choice to make a change and walk out the unknown in a different flow. If we're going to have the God type of courage, that's the ability and strength to make a decision or choice to make a change and walk out the unknown. People are afraid of the unknown. If they don't know what's on the other side, then you're going to go to the other side. Jesus commanded it, it, it or instructed the disciples to go to the other side. One instance, they got shook up by the storm and concerned with the storm. Jesus he was in the boat. He was asleep. He said, we're going to the other side. What are we thinking about? And then another instance, he told them to go and they may see him walking on the water towards them. And, this, and, and, and he, told, he told Peter, come on out here too. You know, so initially when, when the, oh my God, thank you. Listen, it's one thing to hear from God, to hear from Jesus, to hear from the Holy Spirit, but it's another thing to heed from God, to heed from Jesus, and to heed from the Holy Spirit. So we can hear from God, but if we, if we can hear from the Holy Spirit, but if we ain't heeding the Holy Spirit, us hearing is us just playing it safe. When we heed it, we ain't worried about the safe zone. You know, I, 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 sometimes I'll be cropping and making stuff. How do we get these, the, uh, the the banner that's up here? I had to put it on the on the website that was going to print it. And it, 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 around the edges of it, it says safe zone. Like the picture can't be outside of here. It's going to bleed. So it actually say safe zone around the edges. It got a, lot, a little dotted line around the edges and around the, on the right and the left and the top and the bottom. But it says safe zone. Like, you can't go outside of here or it's going to be messed up. But see, I'm, 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 I'm using the picture as an example. Some of us want to stay in that zone. So we don't want the blessings of God really to bleed over into our life because we don't really know what they look like. We say, God bless me, but God is like, okay. No, I, 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 I just blew on you. 
Now I got some more stuff I want to get to, but it's going to take whenever, look, if, if we are to say that we're going to follow God, we're going to have to be outside of the comfort zone, outside of the safe zone, outside of the area where we feel okay. Jesus told him, launch out into the deep. No, if they ain't know how to swim, why would they go out into the deep? Most people that don't know how to swim, they really ain't going to the deep. I mean, they cool with just getting it up to their knees. After that, it's like, no, 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 why they're too deep? Get up to their waist and then you see their eyes start coming out their head. And don't even don't even let them keep walking to get it up to their chest. Then they start trying to, they start hyperventilating for nothing. Because they want to just stay. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the person that don't know how to swim. But I'm talking about this is us as individuals that say that we trust, believe, and endeavor with God, but we play it safe. I remember the areas we play it safe with, with giving, we play it safe with church, we play it safe with our family, we play it safe with, with all of these different things. And like, let's stop playing it safe. Because if we say we trust God and God say do it, get out of the safe zone. Get out of the safe zone, and we want to go with a we want to go with a different type of flow, and we don't have the God type of courage to get out of the safe zone. We gotta go with a different type of flow. All of the things that God does is not always going with the going with the flow. It's not going with the grain. It's going against the grain, and we don't want to go against the grain because we don't want to be looked at as an outcast. We don't be we don't want to be looked at as different, but we are different. He said we are peculiar people. Well, I don't want to offend nobody. They're going to be offended whether you do it or not. So it's, I'm, like, I'm not endeavoring to offend you, but if you took it offensive, that's your fault. I, ain't, I don't have a reason to apologize. You don't want to get offended. I wasn't trying to be offensive. And then you, you, you harbor things that are, you harbor past feelings, past hurts, past pains, past thoughts that will prevent you from going to a different flow and in a different flow. I just want to stay right here. I, I'm comfortable right here. God didn't call us to be comfortable. I said that before. Right? And if we're going to go with the with their type of flow, we just we just go with the contagion. The contagion is going with the flow. We don't want to just go with the flow. We want to be submerged in him. And if we're submerged in him, we don't know which way the current is going anyway. We're just going with the way that he going. Turn to First Peter. First Peter. Get a couple little points in in, in in a couple hours and we'll just see what happens. First Peter. Well, I ain't got no gas to go there. God told you to go, just go. That's God's problem. And as far as I know, God ain't got no problems. I don't know how I'm going to do that. If God say do it, it don't matter. He ain't gonna never ask you to do something that, that he know you ain't capable of doing. Why would God ask you to do something and, and he know you ain't capable? That don't even make sense. But we have, I, I, I heard something that said that we, we have the tendency to believe the devil, but we say we trust God. <laughs> Get out of here, man. First Peter, I, I'm, I'm on over in second Peter. My fault, y'all. I'm just flipping pages. First Peter 5. God, remember I said God ain't going to ask you to do something that he know you ain't capable of doing. So he's going to make sure you're, that you have the strength, the ability, the wherewithal, the mindset. He's going to coach us along the way. It's like he's saying, just go. And we looking for him to tell us to go and do what? He just said, just go over there. Why don't we just go over there and see what's over there that he already may have over there for us? 
or go over there and see, well, well, God told me to come over here. I don't know why. And then eventually you begin to see why. He, Because if he said, go over there, I'm going to have you pray over this person. Wow, well, you know, I really don't know how to pray over people. Come on, man. He said, just go over there. Just go over there. Then when you get over there, you see people doing different things and laying hands and stuff. And God said, jump in. And it's like, ooh, I don't know if I can do that. But why are you going to go over there then? You're going to be obedient right there, but not right there. That don't make sense. My brother said it today, if it don't make sense, the show ain't going to make no dollars. <laughs> but that don't make sense. You're going to be obedient with one thing, but not with all things. First Peter 5, and verse 10, right? This is having the courage. This, this is having the courage to not play it safe right here. But the God of all grace, how much grace? All grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. First Peter 5, 10. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle. He going to make you perfect after you suffer for a little while. What's suffering? Not playing it safe. Lord, you can flip it, look at it from the other angle. You're playing it safe, that's why you're suffering. Why is this so hard? God said it's easy over here. Didn't he say in Matthew 11, 20, 28, I believe? He said, come to me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. For my, for my, for my, 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 my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. But we'd rather be over here bouldered down. And then and then drop get rid of the boulder and say, oh my back. Your back is, is hurt because you're carrying all of that weight. The weight is life is gonna keep life in. People gonna keep people in. <laughs> stuff is gonna keep stuff in. But if we trust in and believe in and saying that we believe God, why why are we not? Courageous enough to step out of the same zone. I don't know that man. He will be in church. The Holy Spirit is talking to you, telling you, stand on your feet, lift your hands. And you think the devil said, but your knees hurt. God says, stand on your feet and lift your hands. Do you know, even when I read that first statement earlier on, you know, we want left turn from making the right decisions. God says, stand on your feet, lift your hands. The devil says, but your knees hurt. Don't you think if God told you to stand on your feet, that he's already strengthened you, established you, and, and settled you? And, and if you want to go a little another step further, very well may heal you. But you want to keep playing the same. You want to keep playing it safe. But yes, in God's timing, but if God said it, that's the time. <laughs> what else you waiting for? His bird can't lie. He can't lie. It, the Bible says God's not a man and he should lie. Neither is the son of man and he should repent. But then the Bible also says, did it repent of the Lord that he made man? I he jacked up. I made these people and they turned on me. They believed the devil over me. They allowed the devil to convince them of something that is not. All right. And as long as we keep playing and say that's signing on to a certain lifestyle, to certain comforts. When you start, when you sign on to a certain lifestyle, you automatically reap, reap whatever consequences 
that came with that choice. Remember, we one left turn from making the right choice. When you sign on to a certain lifestyle, you automatically reap whatever consequences comes with that choice. The rules don't change. Whatever choice you make, be it play it safe or step out, look, play it safe or step out in faith, you're going to reap whatever from whatever choice you chose. If you choose to step out in faith, trusting, believing in God, because God said it, and you're stepping out on it, then you're going to reap what you said. You're going to reap what you sowed. You're going to reap what you stepped. You're going to reap from that lifestyle of faith. If you choose to play it safe and not step out in faith, Playing it safe, you're going to reap whatever comes with playing it safe. I know this may sound funny and different with different people. God, all knowing, right? All knowing, all knowing, all powerful and everywhere, right? Think about this. Think about it. Think, think about it from just just the angle, just for the sake of this conversation. Not saying that's the way they, they got did. God took a risk creating man, but He was willing to step out there and take that risk and give man a free will. Not like the angels, because it says angels hearken to the voice of the Word of God. So angels got to listen to what we say. Angels got to listen to what we say as long as we're saying God's word. I mean, I'm just, I'm just using it, using it as, as an example, as using my spiritual imagination. God took a risk, but He all knowing, so He already knew man was going to trip. That, that's the, that's the. He took a risk. What, what, what if, what if Adam and Eve wouldn't, have, what if Eve wouldn't have never allowed the enemy to beguile her? What if? Adam wouldn't allow himself to be in a position to be God as well. What if? See, when we play me and say, we, we eliminate the what if. We say, I'd rather just play and say, I can't be worried about the what if or the possibilities. I know what I know, so I'm going to stay right here. And God said, okay, but why don't you stay right there? You be right there by yourself because I'm over here. The Holy Spirit, it, it, the Bible starts out, right? In the beginning. In the beginning. And he said, the Spirit of God moved. So as long as you play and safe and the Spirit of God is moving, but you're going to stay in the safe zone. I'm going to keep playing and safe even though the Spirit of God is moving. He's like, well, I'm moving. When you're ready to move, that's cool. You know, the, you know, the Bible is the, the, the story of the Bible where, the, where the, uh, the pool was being stirred up and people was jumping in. And the one man that was impotent, he said, I ain't got nobody to put me in. The, the, the spirit, the water was troubled, which means it was being stirred up. And people was like, let me jump in. I ain't saying nothing about the empty guy. He ain't had nobody to help him. But I wonder if it was other people standing around and just watching. Look at them. They can walk down. Ah, ooh, my shoulder. <laughs> I mean, you know, for real. Because people are going to be people. You know, and then some people will say, you, the Holy Spirit start moving in the church and pastors is laying hands and praying for people. And I, well, I don't know if that's real. But you get in and see you don't believe God is real. But you want to stay in the safe zone. Get out of the safe zone. Don't play it safe. Especially when we know we're serving the God of all grace. That, that'll strengthen us. He, he said, make you perfect. Make you perfect. Well, I guess that 
shuts down all of the ain't nobody perfect statements, right? I mean, really, you think about it. Think about it. People talking about if certain people, certain people talking about they've been suffering for so long, but they should, if they give their life to the Lord, maybe they'll be made perfect. <laughs> this is what the Bible says. I mean, this is the Bible. This is the God of all grace who have called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that ye have suffered. A while. Make you perfect. Come on, man. Hallelujah. And here's the other thing with people that play it safe. Just because I said, I said, just because you hear God's voice, but don't heed God's voice, that means you're playing it safe. Right? Hearing God's voice don't make you more spiritual. It's heeding his voice that makes the difference. Hearing God's voice doesn't make you more spiritual. It's heeding his voice that makes the difference. Meaning you can hear it and stay in the safe zone. And just tell everybody what the Lord said, what the Lord said. Or, or no, you, you just want to have phone conversations and text and put on Facebook the Lord said, but you don't want to apply and do what the Lord said. Because if you if you if you look, if you're hearing his voice, believe it or not, believe it or not, once you hear God's voice and God has said it, you're already being held accountable. You can move if you want to, or you can stay put, but you still will be held accountable. Be, be held accountable. He said, what'd you do with that? And you get to, the, you, you know, because all of us, you know, even though we're going to get, even though we're going to get raptured, or even though when we get to that place, all of us going to have to stand and answer. We're going to have to answer. What do we do? What do we do to, to, to go from the safe zone and get out of the safe zone? You know, you, you can't be safe and have faith. <laughs> you can't be safe and have faith. I'm going to play it safe. How are you going to say you're going to play it safe? But then you're going to say, I got faith in God. But God is about to move it. Living your life for courage is going to take faith. Getting out of the safe zone, you got to operate in faith. Hallelujah. I don't know what to do with that one, then, Pastor. Well, trust God. I do, but move on. <laughs> Check this out. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. First Chronicles 22. First Chronicles 22. Page 686. <laughs> First Chronicles 22. I'm starting at verse 13. Uh, 11. Uh, 11. 11. I'm going to get down to 13, but I'm going to walk through. First Chronicles 22. We're starting at verse 11. Now, my son, now, my son, the Lord be with thee and prosper thou and build the house of the Lord thy God as he hath said of thee. Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding and give thee charge concerning Israel that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. Then shalt thou prosper if Thou takest heed to fulfill the statutes and judgment which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel. Be strong and of good courage. Dread not, nor be dismayed. Like, don't worry about it. Don't be concerned. He said, 
Just be strong in a good courage. If he said, come out of this safe zone. You're, you're, you're actually come out of the safe zone because in the safe zone, you're in more danger than you actually realize. Cast your sales do, do people say, People get people that, that, that do doctors and different studies, they say cancer comes from your body turning on itself. That's what they say. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, cancer got to bow down. Cancer is a name of a disease. It has to bow down. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess the name above all names is Jesus. So cancer doesn't exist. Lupus. You got to bow down too. You a name. You got to get under the name. But either anyway, my whole point is they say that the body is turning on itself. That that I mean I, I don't know man. I probably might have to look that up and study, study that out too. Man, because I mean we're sitting in disease. I wonder if that's just the body turning to try to get nutrients or something that it needs from another part. I'm just, you know, fascinated by the body, even the body. Yeah, to hear what I just said, <laughs> right? But he said, oh, be, a, be only a, be strong and of good courage. Don't worry about it. Just come out to save zone and know that he got you. Don't play a Satan no more. Say, Lord, you know, go home at night and say, Lord, whatever you tell me to do, I want to do it. And then he's going to tell you to do something right there. And it's going to be something that's going to take you out of the comfort zone. For real. I mean, the, the first thing, the, the, when, 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 when Jesus, when the Holy Spirit was down here chilling and Jesus showed up on the scene, first thing the Holy Spirit did was say, come on, we're going to the wilderness. <laughs> Come on, we're going to the wilderness. This is saying he was led of the spirit into the wilderness. He didn't, do, he didn't get a chance to really smack nobody, spit on nobody, call a demon out of nobody. Hey, come on, we're going straight to the wilderness. The wilderness, like we just got to read in the first Peter, he said, after you have suffered for a while, after you have been. Uh, 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 tried after you have been tested, after you have been shaped and formed, after you have been eradicated of all that craziness, then the Lord will, will make you perfect. Ain't that something? He gonna make us perfect. This is look, not just perfect, but strengthened. And then he said, be of good courage. But see, the only way we can do it, 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 it even if he's giving us wisdom, he's giving us knowledge, he's giving us understanding, but if we don't heed to fulfill what he said. So if we don't heed what he told us to do, I wonder if that makes people weaker. I know it sounds like the, when people say, well, I don't be hearing from God. Well, he probably got tired of screaming at you. Don't you get tired of screaming at your kids? And then, then you want to just give them a whooping. So God's whooping is, okay, let me just back up for a minute until they realize it. <laughs> turn it, turn it in the same in the same chronicles. Turn to chapter 28. We're going to read it. In, in uh, 20, first Chronicles 28, verse, verse 1. And David assembled all the princes of Israel and, and princes of the tribes and the captains and the companies that ministered to the king by, by course and to the captains over the thousands 
and captains over the hundreds, and the stewards over all of the substance and possessions of the king and of his sons, with the officers and with the mighty men and with all the valiant men unto Jerusalem. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in my heart to build a house of, house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And for the footstool of our God and had made ready for the building. David was all ready to get it done. But God said unto me, thou shalt not build a house for my name. Because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. How be it the Lord God of Israel choose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father. He liked me to make me king over all Israel and all of my sons. For the Lord hath given me many sons. He hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. David said, I got all this stuff together, man. We're about to build a house for the ark of the covenant and a place to rest at. And he said, now God said, we ain't built nothing. <laughs> David still continued on serving the Lord. He didn't let that. See, God tell us no. And we're like, oh, man, what am I going to do? What he said? That's it. And we say David was a man after God's heart. That's what people, people did. Took it on. Down after God's heart like David. Really? And God say, don't do it. I got somebody else that's going to do it. But I'm all ready to do it. I got all this stuff together, man. And baby, you like the dog. Put her head down, tuck her tail, go back into the doghouse. Now, I don't know why God didn't let me do that. Because God got bigger plans. He got bigger things in action. We're just looking at, the, we're just looking at what we're looking at in front of us. God is saying, but I'm looking on the other side. <laughs> Don't be look look look. David David could have could have got upset, could have fainted, could have fell off, but he didn't. He's like, well, since Solomon gonna do it, Solomon to get it done. Hey, but pass it on to his son and move on. So when God says no, don't get upset, don't tuck tail. David, I don't want to have a heart like David after God. God tell you no, then what? Same. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. He says all the prophecies of God is yes and amen. We hear that, right? And when God tells you no, it's for a reason. But we think everything, all we, we everything God gonna say is yes, 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 yes. God will say, no, nah, man, don't do that. And, and, and look, David was intent on doing something good, building a place of rest for the Ark of the Covenant. That's like David was ready to build the temple, build a house for the Lord. He said, no, your son, your son Solomon going to do that. No. Maybe like, huh? What do you mean? But then God told him why. He said, oh, because you killed some people. You got blood on your hands. And blood on your hands can't build this temple. All right. I'm just, I'm just pointing out the obvious. Second Timothy 2. It says, nevertheless, verse 19. 
Nevertheless, the foundations of God stand of sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from inequity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee. Also, what? Right, we started out. He started out telling us. That you, you go back into the back of the chapter. You just study and show yourself approved. Don't 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 shun and profane, babbling and all of that stuff. Because you know it, it would only produce more ungodliness. Just arguing back and forth with people. God's telling us no on some of that stuff too. But no, 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 no. I had to I had to tell them. I got to let them. You know sometimes. Our safe zone is, I just got to let them know. No, you don't. So they know not to cross me because you want to stay in the safe zone. Let them cross you. Seriously. Let them talk about you. You want you try to defend yourself, but you said the Lord is my defense. Be ready. He didn't dwell in the secret place. The Lord going to take care of him, right? So tie it all together. So, so, like, we, not only will we tuck it, tuck our tail and hide it and, and say, I don't want to do that, man. I got to stay right here and stay in the safety of my comfort. Sometimes the safety, sometimes the safe zone is coming out in front of people. So, so can't nobody really see that you saw. So you got to, my safe zone is playing it hard. Do it if you want to and see what happens. Ain't nobody playing with you. But then when you all by yourself and you suffer the marshmallow. I'm, I'm not, not, not taking that away. That's like some people are. Their safe zone is trying to be hard. Why other people's safe zone is being disobedient. And then other people's safe zone is not having faith. And other people's safe zone is being afraid of the unknown. And then some people's safe zone is, I just want to be adventurous because you don't want to be alone. You don't want to see it, 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 it got, you got to have the, the, the proper balances. The Bible says the false balance is an abomination to the Lord. So if you're out here all outrageous and crazy, but then you ain't really showing no authentic and genuine love, you're out here being, all, being all, uh, you know, uh, outlandish and crazy because you that makes you feel safe. Now you feel like people are, 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 are walking on eggshells around you. <laughs> but anyway, back to this, what I'm saying. All right. Being weak, right? Being weak. If a person shows themselves to be weak, they feel like they're not standing up for what they're supposed to be purpose and called to do. But you don't know. See, didn't say Jesus went to the cross. He ain't say a moment word. He ain't say nothing. He let him whoop him. And then, and then when Peter tried to jump fly in the garden, well, I ain't gonna say Peter. He said one of the disciples. But we all we put it on Peter because Peter Peter's a tough guy, right? But yeah. Jesus told him, and I can call out legions of angels. That's it. Even when they said, tell us, ain't you the king of the Jews? He said, you said it. <laughs> you said it. Seriously. But he, he, he suffered a while. But when we go through that type of suffering, and he look, he wasn't playing the same, playing the same. He could have just like, Father God, destroy these junk jokers before he even got to that point. He could have, man, come on, listen. Don't be so weak that you can't stand up for purpose and then fall for anything. Right? Don't be so strong headed that you rebel against the ones that are authentically and genuinely loving. 
See, because you you say something. People do people do me wrong, but what man, Eric, look, how, how can you how can a person make a statement and say everybody tripping? Like they know everybody. Right? And I'm gonna just I'm gonna just speak for myself. If you say I'm tripping, if a person say, man, Nate, be tripping. It's like, what did I do? You know what you did? No, tell me what I did. Oh, I'm tripping because I told you the truth. Oh, come on. Man. I'm tripping because I told you the truth. That now I'm tripping because I called because I told you the truth. Man, come on, man. Something wrong with this picture. Right? Oh, oh, I'm tripping because I don't want to have a mediocre conversation about worldly things. Oh, no, no, not that I'm tripping. I just think that I'm better than you. Because I don't want to have a conversation about mediocre worldly things. Mediocre conversations won't benefit me. People get a kick out of it. <laughs> I know, right? God wants the type of people that are willing to step out into the unknown and accomplish the impossible. God wants somebody and wants people that are willing to step out into the unknown and accomplish the impossible. And God also wants people that are not that won't regard man over him. Right? Y'all remember back in the day? I said back in the day, like we've been like we've been back in the day for y'all remember uh, uh, a while ago you heard the message uh purpose or popularity? Yeah. See, people, people would rather be popular because they feel like that's their Satan zone. Being about others. Being the, uh, the, the, uh, the focal point. I, I use, uh, uh, like, my, my oldest sister, you know, she's, she's in the nursing home. She's, she's well. You know, she has her capacities. A lot of people don't think she has her capacities. I know she got her capacities. <laughs> yeah, that's how my sister was. You know, before she went through the challenges she went through. Uh, she was like, they, as I would say, they, they used to say she was the life of the party. People would be standing around. she come in, everybody get up, everybody get up, come on, everybody get up. Turn DJ, DJ, do this. And they say, you know, the, the whole room packed, ain't nobody on the wall, nothing. That was just who she was. And she still talks about that. Even though she's in, you know, she's in a, she has some, some physical uh, ailments right now. Believe it for her to be healed. They have to stop believing in over 30 years. Well, I take that back because I ain't been saved that long. <laughs> but as long as I've been saved, which is 27, right? Yeah. Yeah, 25, yeah, 27. <laughs> Let me do my calculations. <laughs> we've been married for 25, so we've been 27. 26 and a half, be 27 later on next year. Uh, and they believe in that for because once I, once I started reading and understanding and healing, yeah, but it's it. See, it takes, I, I actually, you got faith. A person, is, if you ask a person if they got faith, they can say, yeah, but it, the proof is in the pudding. But anyway, I said all that to say she was the life of the party. Her safe zone was fun with people. Right? Right? I also seen her. She wasn't around a lot of people. She was different. Relax. 
sometimes agitated, but around people, she felt safe. It made me wonder though, not being around people, did she still feel safe? Feel safe, but not plainly safe. See, this is too different, it's a difference. See what I'm saying, don't play it safe, meaning don't disobey. Don't not do what God said. Don't not step out into the unknown when he says, step out there. You think about me? Peter could have played it safe, right? He, he could have played it safe, say on the road and said, you all right, Jesus, come on, man. But he's like, oh, he's walking on the water. If that's you, Lord, I'm going to walk out there too. He said, come. Jesus, could, I mean, Peter could have played it safe and stayed in the boat, but he stepped out there. And then he started, I mean, he stepped out there and he was so shocked that he started looking around and took his eyes off of Jesus. That's the thing is when God tells us to step out there and get out of our own safe, not play it safe anymore, and we step out there, we got to keep our eyes on him. Or else we're going to start sinking. Right? And as long as we're playing it safe, we won't get we won't get fulfillment. And we won't tap into a fulfilled purpose. We'll be doing other stuff to try to get filled. Amen. Amen. All right, so that's it. That's it for tonight. That's it for tonight. We uh see what God wanna do next week with this. It's, 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 I still got some more, <laughs> but I, I know I, I got a had a cut point right there. All right, don't play it safe. Don't play it safe. Don't play it safe. Hallelujah.